Okay, this demo is to show you how to make a very basic pinch pot. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a ball of clay. I'm gonna wedge this a little bit first and I'm gonna show you how to wedge. So you put your hands on either side and you're gonna be pushing the clay with this like fleshy part underneath your thumbs. And I'm gonna push and turn and push and turn. And as I'm pushing forward, I'm also compressing inwards with my hands to keep it from like getting too long and skinny. And you'll see what's happening. This is called the ram's head. I'm starting to get this kind of double up here and then I'm getting a swirl here. Um, and one of the things that wedging does is it helps to align the molecules of the clay and then it also um, increases the elasticity um, and makes it more durable. Super critical when we're um, throwing on the wheel, but also um, really helpful for any and all ceramic projects. Okay, so one of the keys to making a good pinch pot is starting with a good uh, sphere, okay? So if you got like a funky lumpy piece, you really wanna take your time to start with a nice ball, okay? And then I'm gonna cradle it with my fingers on the outside. And I'm just gonna go right in there with my thumbs. Oh, the other function of wedging is that if there's any air bubbles, it will um, eliminate air bubbles. So the problem with air bubbles in our clay is that there's water and moisture in the clay. And if water gets trapped in an air bubble, what happens when water gets heated in the kiln is it expands. And so the molecules expand and then they have nowhere to go. And it's basically a bomb. It'll blow up in the kiln. So <clears throat> very important, we don't have bubbles. We do not want bombs. So you can see I'm just like, rotating, rotating, rotating it in my fingers. If you stay in one place too long, you're going to end up with um, thin parts and thick parts. Also, I'm kind of giving it a flat, a little bit of a flat bottom so that it kind of stands up. Um, clay has memory also. So if I pull really hard and the outer edges start to open up, it does not want to go back together. Clay is going to revolt against you. It's going to be like, uh -uh. you just pulled all my molecules apart. I don't want to go back together. So you want to be mindful of not stretching it out too far too, too fast because if it gets too thin, it will get floppy and start to kind of like warp and fall over. Okay, so remember lots of rotating, and um, <clears throat> you're also wanting the sides to be like a fairly even um, height. Like you don't want one side to be super tall and one side to be super short. You could flip it over, and if you're wanting like a nice flat bottom here, and um, so it's... It's also going, and this is true for all ceramics, it's going to be finding that perfect sweet spot between it not being too thick and not being too thin. If it's too thin, it'll be floppy, it'll fall over, it will um, warp and not wanna go back to the shape that you want it to be. Um, but one of the qualities of good ceramics is that it's light. When we pick it up, it doesn't feel like a big rock. So we want lightness to our pieces, and um, but we don't want it to be so thin that it becomes unstable. So I'm going to thin this up just a little bit more. Another thing that you can do is you could put your fist in it like this and turn it. You could do that. You could also paddle it. if you're wanting like some of the little fingerprints to disappear. And I actually love fingerprints. I feel like it gives it like a human quality, but some people are like, no, no fingerprints. I want it really nice and um, smooth on the outside. So you can, you could try paddling. 
Also paddling, if you're wanting this top part to be flat, you could paddle it that way. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna start to see that this clay, and it's also, it's really hot out here. Um, it's getting crackly, okay? So when it starts to get crackly, you're gonna want to put some water on it. And also think about the fact that mostly what people are gonna see is the inside, right? So you want the inside to look really good too. And just like not too much water because you don't want it to get too crazy. And if it gets mushy, it's going to flop also. But you wanna pay attention to the inside too. Make it look good. My outside looks really good, but my inside could use some work. Okay, and then the last bit is to put on a foot, okay? And this part is so, so, so critical, you guys. This is going to, if you nail this right now, it will serve you so well throughout the rest of this class. When you attach things, you must attach them properly, okay? I think I talked about this a little bit with the handles. If I have slit clay and slit clay, even though it feels like, oh, that's sticky, it's sticking, it's not sticking. It will pop off as soon as the molecules start to shrink and it's gonna end up um, popping off, even if it feels like it's sticking at the time. Okay, so scoring, this is called scoring, absolutely critical. So I'm gonna um, get this all nice and rough, okay, scoring. It's a good little term for you. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this um, coil. And again, in the demo file I have for you, there's a million different feet. It could be three little balls. It could be actual feet. So many different possibilities for how you can make a foot on this, but I'm just gonna show you a really basic one, okay? So I wanna measure and make sure goes all the way around, not quite, almost. Notice how I'm stretching my fingers out here to get a nice even coil. It's getting a little skinny right there, but it's gonna be okay. And that's good. Okay, so I've got this scored and now I need to get this scored. So I'm gonna score this. Score, 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 score. And sometimes, folks, Scoring is tedious, but if you don't do it, you will regret it. Okay, so a little water, and then I'm gonna get this on here. Okay, and, and then once you have it on here, then smoothing your connections is also really important. So getting in these little cracks. So there's so many different possibilities for how I could do this. I could try to get in here with a tool and keep this looking really tubular, or I could smooth it so it looks like it becomes part of the body. Totally up to you, your aesthetic of like how you want it to be. So um, if you want that kind of tubular look, you can just like try to keep a crease here or you could smooth it however you want. But connecting, smoothing the connections is really important. So I gotta get in here also and smooth. And if your fingers aren't fitting in here, get a tool. Okay. And then now, one of the other critical things is making sure that it sits flat, okay? We don't want it drooping to one side. Okay, and you'll notice that this is a little bit mushy and when I flipped it upside down, it stuck to the table and kind of malformed a little bit. So you may want to actually let your foot dry upside down just a little bit before you flip it over because if the clay is really mushy, it will, and this is heavy and it's pushing down on this thin little bit, it will deform it. So, um, you could also use the um, heat lamps over there if you're wanting like a really quick um, setup for your, for your foot. Um, but just know that if you flip it over um, when it's really mushy, it'll, it'll deform. So watch out for that. And then you're gonna put your name and your period number or your initial stamp and your period number here. And then that's it. 